Okay, greetings. My name's Rich. This is Classic Games Redefined. And this is part of a series of videos I'm doing. I don't know how many games I'm going to do here, but I'm going to look at it. We're sticking mainly to board games. I will probably pick a few favorite video game stuff out. I'm also like to do genres, and if there's some tech that would make game better, I'll recommend doing it. I mean, I want to show a Joy 2 keyboard thing. A keyboard and joystick, whatever. Anyhow, it's used for emulators and stuff, so it's really good. What we're looking at here now, and this is why why that game, and I have game in parentheses because I may do some games, genres. What we're looking at here is Seven Wonders. This is a game I really like, and I'm going to go into the reasons why I like it. And I want to do a little bit of, from a gameplay perspective on it. What I do want is let's describe a little bit of this game here. And you have a ancient kingdom. This is one of them. I don't know which one this is. It looks like it's Petra. And you build wonders, and you build your kingdom up. You also have military. There'll be a standoff at dinner round, and you'll lose or gain victory points based upon how strong your military is. But this is part of, like, civilization. They call it 4X or empire building games. There is no exploration in this game. Let me give you one of the issues. Besides, I like the theme here. If you happen to like a Civ game and want something like that here, I really like this. I mean, you might argue there are more detailed Civ games out there than anything else. But let me give you an issue we have a Civ or an Empire building game. It could take hours on end. I mean, even the card game through the ages can drag on for hours. The idea is that's something shorter. But when you do that, you're going to end up taking stuff out. And what we have here with this, Seven Wonders, is for me, this is a really good game that thematically captures what you do in a Civ game with very simple play mechanics. I mean, the play me I mean, if you look at the stuff here, it has your wonder, which you're trying to build on the bottom. You're going to be either, if you don't put these cards face up to do, by spending the resources that are up and left and right, kind of like a summons in cost of magic then you either have to trash it to get cash, and you start off with some money, or you can put it under here if you meet the requirements. Like this one here to get the 14 victory points, you need 14 bucks. This also wants two brick and two ore. And remember what I said here, I might go over the list of the stuff this game has here. You have the wonders, you have leaders with an expansion, and it has other guys here, which you, before you begin the game, you're going to draft them, put them out, and you play them at the start of round as you can. Pay money to give you bonuses. You have the military cards, as I said. Any good Civ, any good Empire game would have that. You have that there, and that has an effect of having a stand-up combo. You have these green tech cards that give you free bonuses. Let's scroll. Let's go over here for a second. I'm going to scroll and take a closer look at this. You have these tech cards. And other things, too, like these civic buildings, too. They give you money. What you do is you have this, and rather than spend resources, you can have this card... If you have this card out, you can put a free thing in the way. In addition, there are symbols on top. So you can score points for that way. So there's a lot of different things. Oh, there's one more thing here that's kind of unique. I haven't seen in a Civ game before. But it's kind of like a wild endpoint victory thing. There's these guild cards. They come out in the third era. If you see the thing. The, hold on, let me show this to you. See, if you flip it. See, it says era three. I grabbed the entire guild deck there. So if I go, it looks like I grabbed it. Anyhow, this is the first era, and you're going to go through it. And you have a lot of this stuff here. These com commerce buildings that give you money, or you can use to trade. That's another thing. Is you pay pay person money to the left if they have a good debt you need, and you can get it to build, put these cards into plain requirement. And this also one's here that's really useful. I like this one here, this guild. And there's other ones. You have different guild. Neat thing about the guilds here? is that they allow you to score points for what your opponents, what your guys to the left and right do. So you have that. About every single thing outside of exploring a map you had to have in a Civ game. Again, because of this, these different things, you have different paths. Some are more risky than others. Like, I will argue that this one's a more risky one. But the ones are different. Military is pretty solid, but you enter an arms race. And it's not too harmful to skip it. You're going to lose a few victory points. You can go to money route, and with the leaders that come out, let me just grab, let me grab this. Hang on a second. Let's go over, and I'll show you some leaders. We'll add this too. So we're gonna unlock it, grab it, and go over, and we flip. These also be dealt too. So you have different ones here. 
This one here, I believe, lets you get a leader for zero if you play it. And then there's other ones, so. That one, you get, I believe you get three money. You get additional money if you trade. You, whenever you do a trading, I believe you get a buck back, so it encourages it. They do different things like that. I even seen a Will Wheaton card. Don't hold that against the game, though, but anyhow. So you have all these different paths you can do to win the game. Excuse me, I'm taking a little bit of notes here. So anyhow, you have your paths to win. You also have the neat part. Why the Civ game is you get to build a little kingdom. So you're putting these cards out. And you build your kingdom, and you see it's called building the engine to get the goods. You have an effect, and you can do stuff there and be able to get things. It's really gratifying when you build up a lot of goods and stick them in a the corner. Like in the upper left-hand corner, he starts off with a brick. You then don't have to buy from people. So that's another good thing it has. Let me go. That's one. Of, yeah, that's another one. Let me go ahead and let me scroll away a bit, and you can see what else we have here. What we have here is this game goes up to seven or eight players. And you're going to think for a second, if you don't know about this game here, that's got to be very time consuming. But I mean, that's going to drag down what people are doing it. But let me give you another thing here: the play mechanics being very, very simple. It, you're going to have a hand of cards. You're going to have like. How many we have here? And I actually don't want, but let's say I have it here. I need to unlock it. But these cards are actually what we had in hand. These CD uh, six cards or whatever. Anyhow, you have a hand of cards. You're going to play one, and then you pass either the left or right. See, on the first round, you're passing clockwise, and then right, counter, left, clockwise. If you see these leader cards at the beginning of the round, they you pass them right so balance so it's left right left right anyhow what you have here let me go back a second let me flip it over so you can look at the leaders that's from another set the base set doesn't have it but it adds more stuff to it so anyhow you have you pretty much very simple play mechanics just playing a card and passing which i know people who will say this isn't really civ games and simple play mechanics but if you're streamlining you want to reduce it to that but for me, it captures all the stuff here. You get the building and wonders. But anyhow, one last thing I'll talk about, besides all this other stuff I like. There is a decent variety of play. You, depending on number of players, different cards will come out. You also have the guilds. These number, these guilds are not the same every game. You could vary. You'll get different stuff. You may have those. So that happens. You know, leaders can vary. There's a decent pile and only get like three or four. And Julia, that's like over 40. You may not see one for a while. And let's see what else there is. There is also... You have these different nations, which are actually measured by their wonders. See, this is one of them. There's a bunch of these. So let me do this and we'll flip it over. I'll show you what it was. Yep, that's it. So anyhow. This is the B side. There's an A side one also that makes things streamlined. I mean, that's simpler. So you have that. What else do we have here? The Wonders have two sides. You have the different nations that have different abilities. And you have the leaders. And then there's these civic cards. I don't think we have the map out here. But you have these civic cards that actually get mixed in with these here. And they do things. And also, there's, you don't, we don't have it here, but there's the Babel opening, which is the Babel expansion. Which normally, when you're playing, like if I'm playing here, I worry my, to my partner, to my opponent to the left and right. But the Babel expansion, you could affect everybody. So they have that. And different ones add different things here. And I happen to like the leaders and all that. I like to try to play with this as possible. And it plays quick. Usually, you'll finish up in an hour, not a half hour. So, it plays quick enough. Does There's a lot of things to it. To sum up the good things about this here, it has the good attributes of an empire-building game, but you play in a lot less time. You have rooms for strategic planning, particularly if you get leaders and everything else planning. Absolute minimal downtime, because everybody's playing at the same time. And then there's up to seven or eight players, so it accompanies a lot of players. And then you've got, with the expansion and everything else, you get to mix up the play here. And depending on number of players, let's go back here. Like, you'll show you this one more thing I'll show you here. This is in a three or seven or more player game that will come out. So you have different cards when you play with less players. And then you also have the Black City cards that do different things. So there is a lot, a lot to like here. 
if you have an interest in a Civ game and don't mind things being extracted and streamlined and maybe getting rid of the map, it's definitely worth it. The only thing is, I will give you a little bit of thing here. They say there's a two-player version. If you're new to the game, don't play it. It's interesting, but it's really not the strength of the game. The strength of the game comes up with having more players. Play a very tight game with three or more players, and I highly recommend this game. If what I described here, as far as the good attributes are of interest, go check it out. Anyhow, so we'll be doing more of these videos, and I wanted to show it to you. So anyhow, that's it. So we'll do the following. Let's just call it here. So, okay, that's it. I do want to thank you for watching. May your die always roll five.